What's up, movie lovers? Jay Splice Films of Food here, and I am totally going to stop this impression because it sucks. <laughs> there was a laugh, all right? I hope at least the laugh was fine. But, yeah, look at this, guys. Uh, last week, bought a Freddy Krueger glove, and that's why I didn't watch part four, because I went to the mall, got the glove, and I was just like, yeah, I don't really feel like watching part four, because I already watched two and three, but... This weekend, I'm going to, I apologize, by the way, that's why the Dream Master, which is the one we're reviewing today, uh, pretty anticlimactic, Nightmare on Elm Street 4, the Dream Master, um, I already got my review pulled up, I'm going to go to the actual IMDB page for it though, because I'm very unprepared, and I got it now, and I'm just going to wear this glove the whole time. So good. I mean, it's pretty cheap. Like, it was a $17 one at Hot Topic. I don't really like the the color of it. You know, I wish the glove itself was a bit darker. But, like, from the back, this looks pretty dang good. It's just, like, all the fingers. Like, or the blades. and move them all different. And, obviously, the actual, like, knives don't look great. But I don't want them to look realistic because I don't want to get arrested. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to be sitting here wearing this for the, pretty much the rest of the Elm Street series. Like, I'm, I'm probably going to use it in one of the thumbnails for the ranking. Not for any of the actual movies. But this weekend, I'm going to watch part four, five, and six. Because I got to get through, I got to trudge through the crap. I know part four, five, and six are known to be bad. But, let's just finally get into the review. And actually, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to. Save it for the outro. I'm going to take the glove off because I don't want my hand to be sweating this whole time. But, uh, yeah, so Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master, is directed by uh, Rennie Harlan. And who's it written by? Let me see here. It says Wes Craven, but he just created uh, Freddy Krueger. William Kotzwinkel, Perry Hel Brian, why did I read Perry? Brian Helgelin, and... Jim Wheat, well, some guy using his pseudonym, Scott Pierce, but he has two different credits. Jim Wheat or Ken Wheat, I don't know which. Whatever. Um, oh, yeah, the, uh, the cast goes by alphabetical order. So, uh, Lisa Wilcox, um, Robert England, I'm just saying who I know, Tuesday Night, Rodney Eastman. Ken Sagos, I think that's how you say his name. The guy who plays uh, Kincaid. Andrus Jones, I think, plays Rick. Alright, but here's the plot. Freddy Krueger returns once again to terrorize the dreams of the remaining dream warriors, as well as those of a young woman who may be able to defeat him for good. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's get off to the review. This is a pretty short review that I wrote up on IMDb. So, maybe this will be a short video. Um, so I said it was cheesy 80s fun. First, the good. I like the fact that it picks up right from the last one. Yeah, I like that. It, it was just a bit confusing to me, like how old Kristen, uh, Joey, and Kincaid were, because it seemed like they were in the same grade as Alice and all the new characters, but it doesn't matter that much. I like that, because it's got that nice, strong sense of continuity. It's not like, well... Both Halloween and Friday the 13th timelines were pretty consistent, like, from the start. I mean, obviously, Halloween 3 ignored, but, like, Friday 1 through 5, 1 through 6 is pretty consistent, and then 7, it gets confusing, but, yeah. That's what I like about Elm Street. It really follows that continuity, and besides Part 2, but still, I like Part 2. Um... The characters are likable and decently acted. Uh, this second time watching, I didn't really like the characters as much. Get a bit closer. I was just only sitting further away so, so you could see the glove. But the characters, like, I remember in my Final Destination 4 review, I said I didn't like the characters in that movie because they're all just, like, summed up by one character trait. That's kind of how it is in this one, but here the acting is at least, like, fun 80s style acting where it's really over the top and everybody delivers their lines like this right like everybody i feel like everybody in 80s slasher movies their acting is very exaggerated and all the girls are like yeah and 
and then dunes are really crazy too. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. But uh, I like the concepts for the dream world. Yeah, the dream sequences, there was a lot of them this time. That's really the only focus. Because once you get to Elm Street 4, nobody really cares about the story. We just want to see Freddy Krueger kill some kids. Which the director, Benny Harlan, pointed out. He said, like, uh, Freddy was becoming like James Bond, kind of, where people just wanted to see him, uh, like, in action. I was going to say kill people, but it's not like when you go into a Bond movie, you say, I want to watch him kill people. I mean, that's probably part of it, but still. Um, yeah, the, the score was great, just like in the other movies. Yes, the score was still good. The score of Elm Street, I really like. It's very unique, the do, 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 like the theme song, but also the other tracks. And this was definitely the start of MTV Freddy. That's what everyone calls it for Elm Street 4. I'd say 4 through 6 is the MTV Freddy. Uh, Three be included. Three is kind of included, but three is still serious. This is the movie where it's just very comedic, and there is still some scary stuff. Like the third act is, I mean, it's not actually like horrifying, but it's still kind of creepy, and the effects are gnarly. Um, but this is one is very it had like a lot of licensed songs, songs that weren't just the score. Like, a lot of pop, a lot of rock, which I like. I'm not going to complain about that. It just feels different a bit. It feels a bit different from the other movies. Uh, Freddy is great, although he's more of a comedian now. Yeah, he, he did have a lot of one-liners in this one. It's pretty much all that his dialogue was. He wasn't very threatening anymore. But I still feel like the focus is on him in the dream sequences, although they do focus a little bit more on, like, everything around him. But he's kind of, like, manipulating the dream world, so it's not... It felt like a carnival ride at some times, you know? There's the part towards the end with uh, Dan and Alice and then Freddy in, like, the tube, and they spin in the tube. Like, that is straight up just, like, something you would... at a carnival or a state fair. I don't know. A little tube ride. Uh, I like the ending. It was very poetic. It's funny that I said that. It is. Like I said, I like the third act. The ending was pretty good. I also like the fun 80s feel of it. Yeah, it felt very MTV. It was, it was fun. Alright? This movie wasn't very serious. It wasn't bad. It was just fun. Very entertaining. The best part, though, is the kills. They're creative and have amazing effects. The effects, like I said before, really good. Not really anymore. Mm, there's some tension and suspense, but it's really just like, look at this. I feel like I'm unintentionally using Freddy's voice. Look at this. Um, the cons, though, it is a bit too outdated. I don't think I'm going to complain about that anymore because it's very 80s and that gives it its own feel. So when you watch it later, it's like, okay, this is what it was like some back then. Uh, the dialogue is really bad, yes, but I looked, I did my research, I looked it up on Wikipedia, and the writer's strike was going on at this time, so they had to improvise a lot of dialogue with the actors, and they had to write stuff on the set, and Rennie Harlan, the director, was like coming up with death ideas on the spot, instead of going from the script, so they did do a pr pretty good job. Like, the dialogue, you kind of deal with it because the whole movie isn't very serious. It's not taking itself very seriously. There is one kill, though, that I thought was actually somewhat serious, and I liked it. The, the asthma attack. I'll just say that. There, there's not really a bad kill. There was a couple where it's like, eh, it's kind of lame. Like, uh, nah, I'm not going to get names. I don't want to spoil this. I don't know how much you guys care about spoilers for... Home Street 4. Uh, I did like the Dream Master stuff. I thought that was a cool way to progress the story. I, I looked on Wikipedia and it said Wes Craven had an idea for the fourth movie where it's like time travel in dreams, which I think sounds really cool, but it could be really stupid if you, if you don't write it properly. I would like to see that. Somebody make that. Like, if you can somehow pull it off in a fan film, 
I don't think that would be the good way to reboot the series with like time travel and dreams, but that could be cool. Maybe like time travel to stop Freddy before he gets burned and before he kills kids. I don't know. I just read that. Thought it was cool. But the Dream Master thing with Alice like getting the powers of everybody and like being able to pull people in your dreams and getting that from Kristen, I thought that was a really cool progression of the story. And this movie doesn't have a very strong story, but that's pretty much it. That uh, Kristen like passes her power down to Alice, which I liked. It, it made for something a little different. Uh, it gets too dumb in the end, eh, I guess. And there's and there's some noticeable tonal problems. It doesn't know if it wants to be funny or scary. I don't think that's true. It definitely knows that it wants to be fun with a little bit of scares, but not a lot. All in all, Dream Master is a fun, above-average sequel with some problems. I'd agree with that still. And I gave it an 8 out of 10 on IMDb, but I'm actually going to give it a... I got to put the glove back on. A 7 out of 10. So, that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to do... I'm about to start watching uh, Part 5 The Dream Child right now. I'm dreading it a little bit because... I don't like Dream Child. I don't even really remember it, much of it, to be honest. So, I guess it will be interesting to revisit it. But for now, this is Jace Bice Loves and Food, and I'm saying bye. Bye! <laughs>